that was a spin-off of the Danny Thomas show. That was, again, William Morris came to Sheldon and said we have Andy Griffith, who at that time had just come from a Broadway show called No Time for Sergeants and had a you know, fairly successful career. And we want to make him a television actor. And Sheldon came up with the idea of making him a, a sheriff in Andy's you know, Andy sort of recreated his real hometown. And so what the story was that Danny is speeding, gets arrested by the sheriff and thrown in jail uh, for whatever reason, I don't remember. And he's supposed to do uh, Ed Murrow's type of person-to-person uh, -person show and they bring the cameras down and do it in, in the jail, Danny in jail. And <clears throat> the sheriff, Andy, Andy Griffith, a Andy Taylor, I think his name was, was the judge, and you know, I just had all these jobs in the one town. I don't, that didn't stay in the show, but that was the pilot. <clears throat> and and uh, Francis Bavier, who played Aunt B, was just a townsperson in the show. He didn't have a deputy, there was no Don Knotts, he had a little boy. And I, I do remember the casting of Ronnie, because Ronnie was very young. Uh, but I mean, we were, I was sort of involved in that process. So the pilot basically was a Danny Thomas show where you see Andy Griffith. And Andy tells the story of he gets a phone call when it's announced he's doing a pilot from Don Knotts, who he had worked with on Broadway. He said, well, should, don't you need a deputy? And that's how Don got the part. And of course, who knows what the Andy Griffith show would have been without Don. I mean, he was, they were so wonderful together. And, and Sheldon brought in Aaron Rubin to Right, and produced the show, and so I think, I think it was like the second year of the show. I had been saying to Sheldon, "I really want to do more. I want to learn more. What else can I do?" And Ronnie Jacobs, who was one of the executives with the company, was was the associate producer, which basically was making sure that the laugh track was within reason. You know, supervising the laugh track. So I. So about the second or third year, you know, Ronnie went off to do something else, and Sheldon said, okay, you can do that. <clears throat> so that's all I did, really, basically, was go to the editing room and look at the edits and discuss them with the editor, and then make sure that every line that Don said wasn't laughed. You know, try to get the laughs as close to real and not too big. So that, that was what associate producer on the Andy Griffith show meant. I didn't have anything to do with it creatively. How, I was still the assistant director on the Danny Thomas show. How were the laughs generated? <coughs> Pardon me? How were the laughs generated? The like famous the laugh machine. A man sits there and plays them. He's got continuing loops of laughs that he's taken from other shows. And I, I don't know how, because they never let you look inside. But he'd play it like a keyboard. Some laughs would be loud and big, and some would be two people, and some would have coughs in them. And he would just play this laughs. They, I'm sure they still use them today. The laugh machine. Man... A man named Charlie Douglas, who invented it, and it was a closed box, and it was locked. He never let anybody look inside of it. Did you have uh, symbols or some way to let him know what? Yeah, I just say, you know, it's too loud. Pull it down. Too many people. We're outside. Don't you know that that type of thing? But I mean, they they pretty much knew what they were doing. Anyhow, it was the third year. I mean, it was just really what it was was Sheldon's way of giving me something else to do, learn another end of the business. I don't think I contributed much, but it was nice to have my name up there, associate producer.